happiness through curiosity on TRS Clips. Explain CRISPR because I think that this is the part of the podcast where college students really stand up and listen. <laughs> uh, so from basics, explain CRISPR. And is, I'm assuming it's related to what you've spoken to. Yes. In fact, this. I'm quite proud of this that I think one of the first general articles on CRISPR was written by me in okay. 2012, if I'm not mistaken. What is that CRISPR? So, uh, <laughs> CRISPR-Cas is a mechanism uh, by which you can actually do gene therapy, you can cut and paste, you can remove things from any gene and you can add things. It has gone to a level which is called gene drive technology. Um, whereby you can actually, what people have done is, they have uh, uh, genetically engineered the female mosquito to not lay eggs. Mm. It's very scary. In fact, CRISPR-Cas9, there has been a lot of debate whether this should be allowed, whether human embryos should be allowed to be, uh, uh, you know, whether this technology should be allowed to be used on human embryos. Uh, but at least as of now, uh, people, scientists, uh, there is a consensus that we should allow this technology to prosper. Um, so what I believe, looking forward ahead, because actually when you said, it's a very interesting thought, uh, very interesting way you put it. As scientists, you said you look at future. Science is future. Any discovery or invention is forward looking. Mm. Very rarely do you find, I mean, of course, if you look at, uh, you know, uh, uh, for example, science that involves also archaeology or you're looking at trying to answer questions that happened previously in biology. I'm talking about, of course, Big Bang, when you're looking at, you're not looking at the future, you're looking at the past. But for example, did Saraswati exist? Mm. You know, this so-called mythical river. So you need scientific tools to prove that. And people have shown that incredibly that yes, it was actually a glacial fed river. It was not a monsoon river. So but that's of course going into the past, but in the domain of biology, drug discovery and also that's looking for the future. So CRISPR would actually cure cancer completely. I'm of the view in the next 15 years, malaria would not exist. In the next 20 years, tuberculosis would not ex actually not exist. So till now, if I'm not mistaken, the one of the very few diseases that only exist in a vial is smallpox completely it doesn't exist anywhere else so completely cured humanity was completely polio they thought we have cured it there is no polio anymore but few segments of population came out where the population was not vaccinated properly i think in nigeria in pakistan where polio still exists but very quickly, if you, you know, if the governments have that thrust, then you can eradicate polio. But very few diseases have been eradicated. But CRISPR-Cas9 has, because the gene therapy potential, cutting and pasting of things, it will cure these diseases. Okay. Correct me if I'm wrong, but basically within every cell of your body yes. exists a DNA strand. Yes. Within the mitochondria, if I'm not mistaken? The, inside the nucleus. Inside the, I'm sorry. Yes. Inside the nucleus exists the DNA strand. Yes. Uh, that DNA strand has... All the information about you, yes. how long your nose would be, Absolutely. how your eyes would look, what yes. texture your hair is, your skin color, etc. And many things related to how your thought process is also yeah, possible, uh, related to your immunity, yes. etc. Now, you are the combination of your two parents, yes. four grandparents, mm -hmm. uh, more great grandparents, yes. and nine generations back, yes. 81 people roughly. Yes. 81 people have combined to make you. So you're a combination of a lot of genes. Yeah. And now human beings and science have reached a point where you take that DNA strand and you alter it. So mm -hmm. if you want a really good looking baby, you can make it. If you want a really healthy baby that never falls ill, yeah. you can make it. Yeah. Why is this a bad thing? Why is there even a debate that this is a bad thing? Okay, so there are two ways to answer it. Sure. Number one, ye sab aapne kiya, uske baad result kya aayega? That is the question. Mm. And it is too, too quick, too soon in terms of uh, scientific timeline to be able to trust CRISPR-Cas 100%. Okay. And I'll tell you why. I think uh, three or four years ago, uh, there was a paper in Nature Communications that talked about a lot of off-site, off-site, so you expect CRISPR-Cas9 to act 
where you want it to act. Off-site means it is not only acted there, it's acted a few other places on the human genome. You never want that. One right? second. The yeah. way CRISPR works is your DNA strand is a series of bits of information. Yes. And A, Cris B, G, and C. CRISPR has the ability to go in that DNA strand. Yes. Cut things Correct. through chemicals. Yes. Like imagine a scissor, but chemically Absolute. made. It is like a scissors. Yes. And also imagine cellotape chemically made and it's, it has an ability to put things in its, in that place Absolutely. also. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. But you're saying when you cut off a particular part of it. Yes. Uh, maybe you want your kid to be really tall. Hmm. So you cut off the short gene, you put a tall gene there, but you don't know what the effect of the tall gene will be on his liver. That will come later. Of course, that is there. What I'm saying is the process itself, the, uh, you know, how you identify where your CRISPR-Cas9 must go and bind, it can bind to five or 10 other places. Okay. So it might insert itself or cut a gene that you never intended to be removed, right? So for example, just to give you one example, which is a horrid Frankenstein kind of thing, you wanted a long nose. Yes, your CRISPR-Cas9 has gone there and has altered so that gene. But it has also gone and bound to a place that gave you an eye. But I'll tell you a lot of things are happening in animals which are quite scary to an on because they have a profound sociological society effect. Ours and also a lot of societies are besotted with skin color. Now there are two genes that are responsible for giving the color that we have, right? They are to do with melanin degradation and production and all that. And when man left, man or woman left Africa and went to cooler climes and those, there were mutations in those genes. Uh, CRISPR-Cas9 has actually rendered brown mice white. As in turned them into pherangs? Yes. So the human angle on this is? It's phenomenal. Tomorrow, you know, you would want CRISPR-Cas9 and, uh, you know, why do you think the largest selling creams in our country are skin whitening creams. Mm. We have this morbid fascination mm. with, I mean, I don't want to take any names, but you look at Kajol's first film and you look at Kajol's last film. You can't, mm. you can barely make out if it's Kajol. Mm. So I don't know how that happened. Mm. Uh, you know, computer graphics, but the fact of the matter is cream can do one thing. Genetically is like you hundred percent, your skin color is white. As in, will a fully grown adult be able to use CRISPR technology? Yes, yes. So uh, the point is, if it is in your progenitor cells, I mean, stem cells or some things of that sort, then every cell is going to be producing that. So not only would your babies come out to be white, every generation would come out to be white. Mm. But the problem is then you would say, well, uh, what kind of shade of white do I want? A, I mean, I'm, of course, it is morally repugnant, but I'm saying that you are in a marketplace. Uh, you know, you're going to demand that I need a little paler white. Chahiye, mujhe. Wow. <laughs> and plus the off-site effects are, could be debilitating. I gave you the example of, you know, your eye could be lost. Your, and these are the kind of experiments that people were doing on fruit fly, drosophila, geneticists. Developmental, so this is into the domain of developmental biology, as they call it. And people would routinely, dis routinely discover that if you were to tinker with some genes of Drosophila, you would get four wings, you would get 10 legs, you would, because remember, and this is so utterly fascinating, we uh, biologists were made to think that you have one gene and you have one product of that gene. So if you have 5,000 genes in your cell, you would have 5,000 proteins because that is how it works. You have the gene DNA, from DNA you get RNA and from RNA you get that protein. So mm. people thought if you had gene X, you would get protein X. Then they found out this concept called alternate splicing. That is how the RNA that is made is spliced to give you the protein. I mean, very roughly speaking, they found one gene in Drosophila, one gene that gives rise to 38,000 proteins. Mm. And alternate splicing happens in human cells as well. So when I say humans have 23,000 genes, it actually doesn't mean we have 23,000 proteins. We could have a million proteins. Mm, okay. Uh, to explain this very simply, yeah. I'd once spoken to a guy who was very fascinated with biohacking. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, mm. but this alternate splicing, yes. does it also imply that I think the gene linked to AIDS was also linked to how much muscle mass you can put on or something like that. So uh, basically, if you okay. make someone immune of AIDS, right. they'll become like a bodybuilder also. Quite possible. So the, the if I'm not, because I'm not in that field, but I think they were CXX5 receptors. 
uh, that were important for the uh, for the AIDS virus or the HIV to latch on to the thing. So if the human cell did not have those receptors, the virus will not be able to enter those things. Mm. Then they found out a few pe- few humans in Africa who naturally did not have that CXX5 gene. They had deletion of that. Mm. So they could not get AIDS. Mm. But you're right. When they found out at their physical phenotype, phenotype of that, they had that same problem. Like yeah. the muscle or yeah. musculature was because most to of the these you, uh, most of these proteins moonlight. By that I mean they are used for five or six functions. Gotcha. You know, so you might inactivate a uh, uh, a protein thinking that this is the function that now will not happen, but the other four useful functions also may not happen. Mm. You know, which is why CRISPR is a technology that's still being developed. I'm yes, assuming. Absolutely. And when this paper came out that talked about the offsite repercussions of CRISPR. CRISPR the uh, the company uh, that was actually based on crispr i think it lost 90 90 90% of its stock value wow so markets are ruthless enjoy this video subscribe to trs clips for more